These are the first two ecospheres I made a little over two years ago now. As you can see, the ecosystem on the right contains plants, the ecosystem on the left does not. That's because I wanted to see how much difference a plant in such a small closed ecosystem would make. So in the last month of 2017 I went to a pond and made the ecosphere that's now known as the natural ecosphere. A little over a week later I went to the exact same spot of the same pond and made the second ecosphere in a very similar way. The only difference being that I added Velisneria plants in this one. Two years ago I started with two of the same jars, filled on the same location around the same time, with an air gap of the same size that were constantly being held under the same conditions. The only difference were the plants in one of the jars. So why don't we take a look and see how these two closed ecosystems developed side to side over a period of two years. This is one week after the natural ecosystem was closed. As you can see there are a lot of little crustaceans, but right from the start there were four animals that never appeared in the planted ecosphere. Bladder snails, tubifex, aka boogie worms, planaria and these worms. The fact that these animals are in the natural ecosphere and not in the planted ecosphere is more of a coincidence than anything else. The plants haven't played a role in this. After a month those worms were gone. The most noticeable change was that a lot of algae was growing on the glass as well as on the leaf. It was around the one month mark that Cartesian polyponym lived in this ecosystem. Not before, not long after. The same is true for the hydra. Somewhere after a month the dust daphnia died. The species hasn't returned ever since. This is the planted ecosphere after two months. A little Velisneria sprout has started growing by now. A very noticeable difference is that there is hardly any algae growing on the glass at all, while the natural ecosphere was covered in it. Of course, it'd be awesome if I could say that that's only because of the plant in the planted ecosphere. The truth is that it could also be caused by a lower biomass. More animals provide more water and carbon dioxide, which more algae can live off. More algae provide oxygen and food for more animals. Pretty cool. So there are too many variables to draw one conclusion. Quite a remarkable similarity between the two ecosystems are the Cartesian polyponym. They appeared in the planted ecosphere as well, around the same time as they appeared in the natural ecosphere. They both have pretty large ostracot colonies. After four months there was even more algae on the glass. There were also more animals in general, but most importantly the amount of these larger ostracots, clam shrimp, has grown a lot. The amount of algae on the glass has gone up in the planted ecosphere as well after 4 months. The fact that there's more algae in both jars has probably a lot to do with warmer and longer days during spring. The Velisneria have also experienced a lot of growth around this time. Interestingly enough, around the same time in the natural ecosphere, the clam shrimp population rose in the planted ecosphere as well. That probably has to do with abiotic factors, like higher temperature and more light. It's nice to see that these factors have the same effect on different ecospheres made in the same place, with source material from one location. Similar to what happened in the natural ecosphere, after some time the Daphnia went extinct. However, that happened after a little over one month in the natural ecosphere and after a whole four months in the planted ecosphere. This difference may be caused by the plants in the planted ecosphere. It could be that they needed more oxygen than could be provided by the algae alone. 
but it may also be caused by less competition for oxygen and food by other animals, because there have always been fewer animals in the planted ecosystem. This is the natural ecosphere after seven and a half months. There's no spectacular change in the ecosystem around this time. The amount of snails grew a little, there was a bloom of infusoria, and the Cartesian polyponym lookalike species made a quick appearance. After seven months, the bigger Ventisneria were dying. There were also new sprouts growing, but they didn't get as tall. This was also the first, and so far last time, a species appeared in the planted ecosphere that never appeared in the natural ecosphere, apart from the Ventisneria, of course. Some sort of water mite. This is the natural ecosphere after a year. All the contents in the jar haven't really changed since the summer. The amounts did change. There was pretty much less of everything, probably because it was winter again. That explanation contradicts what we see happening in the planted ecosphere after a year. Because in this ecosystem, the amount of both the smaller species of ostracod, the seed shrimp, as well as the larger species, the clam shrimp, had gone up quite a bit. The Vallisneria were doing quite well as well. I don't really have an explanation for why this ecosphere was blooming in the winter, while at the same time the natural ecosphere was taking it easy. Closed ecosystems are weird, man. This was the natural ecosphere three and a half months ago. The amount of algae on the glass had gone up again and there were more snails. More noticeable is that the planaria returned, in large numbers. This was after an absence of well over a year. These jars just keep surprising me. So, here they are, the two ecospheres side by side after two whole years. Including dead mosquito. The natural ecosphere hasn't changed much since the last update three and a half months ago. The glass has gotten clearer again, which is in line with the seasonal changes theory which applies to the natural ecosphere, but not really to the planted ecosphere. There's also a small increase in hair algae. Last time the planaria disappeared right after spring. Now it looks like they might be here to stay. Most of the Vallisneria have turned into stumps now. Some of the stumps do have new leaves growing out of them. There is one larger Vallisneria left. It's pretty cool that there are still plants alive in a jar that has been sealed for two years. At least, that's what I think. This is the part where I tell you something more about these plants. So, uh, something, something about Velisneria. The ostracod population is still doing pretty well. This is something else. Here's a startled clam shrimp. If you move them a little, they'll usually become active again. I have noticed in both of these jars that the biodiversity slowly goes down and the changes that occur are increasingly less extreme. The ecosystems are still doing well after two years and appear to be healthy. The ecosystems might still be slowly developing into a perfectly balanced state. Of course, they could also be slowly but steadily dying. However, I don't think there's any reason to believe they're going to crash anytime soon. So far, I'm really impressed. I'd like to thank Adam Rogers, Connor Johnson, Anna Thomas and Axio, as well as the 62 other Patreons for their generous support. 
it is much appreciated. Oh, and don't forget to check out the merch. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.